we call this kind of like session a uh, coffee chat, but it's more like a beer chat right now. <laughs> So basically what we're going to do is, we have prepared some questions um, for Tiamlin from Evernote and uh, basically we're just going to focus on not product launches but about the startup culture, startup lessons where he learned at Evernote. So at any point, at any juncture, if you, if you realize that this whole beer chat is sort of like getting into BS mode, just stand up, <laughs> raise up your hand and ask specific questions that you want us to talk about, okay? So we try to make it as open as possible, uh, make it a conversation, not a one way, not a you know, not two way, but multiple way. So don't be shy, stand up, ask questions. So I'm gonna start. So please listen. Thank you. Alright, thanks, really. <laughs> No, really, like to to Willis's point, I think um, like based on my experience, it works best to to have a dialogue between not just between ourselves, but um, with the audience as well. I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions. Um, I'm more than happy to uh, answer them, have a dialogue with you. So don't be shy. Feel free to uh, open up. Um, in any case, we're having beer right now, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> All right. Okay. So yeah. um, first question and. Uh, Again, formality's sake, uh, thank you for coming. Yeah. So we've been very close friends. Uh, so uh, I started to know him when he was at one of the, like working at one of the startups in, in Singapore. So then he moved to Evernote and time to time I meet him for coffee, learn a bit of, about, about his experience at Evernote and, and I thought it would be awesome for him to speak at one of our meetups. So here he, he is today. And before I actually move on to, to, to the question, um, can you briefly share about like what exactly do you do at Evernote and right. who right. are you exactly? Okay, so um, so I so basically I spent some time in, in, in the valley, Silicon Valley, um, and for the past couple of years I've been very involved in the mobile scene. Um, like Willis has mentioned, I was working in a mobile startup that's based in Singapore. And I joined Evernote last year in June, actually, and really, it's it's been it's been great so far, um, and it's very interesting because only couple only two weeks ago, barely three weeks ago, we we had our first physical office in Singapore, and before that, well, I was working from hotspots to hotspots, from from cafes to cafes. It's not that much different from many of you here, so. Uh, still pretty much a startup <laughs> experience, if you will, albeit transitioning to a bigger one. Um, so basically, my role in, in Evernote is what we call market development. And well, it's kind of like a nebulous title, but what it really means is that we go into a new market, um, a new country. We look at, you know, how could we best work with local partners? How could we best work with local developers? Because we have open APIs. And really, it's to be on the ground to engage with our most important component of the business, which, is, which, is, which are our users, really. Um, so we do all of that, and, and that's, why, that's why we're here in Asia, and especially here in Southeast Asia. OK, so uh, first question. How big is Evernote? How many people do you have in total globally? Um, people, people meaning employees. Or, employees. OK. Um, so interesting fact, when I joined last June, we have about 100, slightly less than 180 people. Today we have about 270 people, north of that in fact. Um, it's been scaling really, really quickly. The latest office edition is in Singapore, like I mentioned. Um, just not too long ago, we have a Brazilian office as well. Um, and in total, around the globe, we have about eight offices around there. So yeah, it's been... It's been growing pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, how about yeah. Asia? Specifically in mm -hmm. Asia, how many people do you have? In Asia, so Asia including, so Asia we had a couple offices. In Singapore we have, we have, we have a presence in Singapore. Um, there's one in Korea, um, Taiwan, um, Japan and China. And in total we have about 25 people in Asia. Okay, yeah. so um, that leads on to the next question, um, right. I, which I really want to ask you is that you, you jump from a startup to a bigger startup, yeah. right? Um, mm -hmm. Why? Why Evernote? And why do you make a decision to join Evernote and help to push it in Southeast Asia? Right. Uh, it's, actually very, it's actually a very simple reason. I, I was a fanboy. No, it's a <laughs> fanboy. <laughs> no, 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 I was a fanboy. So, so I was in Silicon Valley in 2009 and basically a couple of things happened in 2009, right? Um, iPhone, iPhone 3G happened, right? Um, app stores happened, 
So I had this shiny new device on my hand and I went to the app store, I started downloading apps and games and see what I could do with this shiny new gadget. And Evernote was there. I was super excited. Um, and basically what happened was, uh, and at that point in time, Evernote was only like, what, 30, 40 people. We were working out of a warehouse in Mountain View. Um, so basically I invited myself over for lunch. I, I made friends with the team and keep in contact since. And really, and I think what I, my experience mirrored a lot of um, what our users actually um, went through actually, um, which is the initial couple of months when I downloaded Evernote, I, I kind of like, oh, cool. I, I, I had some like users for it, but very quickly I forgot about it actually. <laughs> but maybe after like, what, 10, 11 months, I started hearing more and more about Evernote. I started digging more into Evernote. And that's when I really, you know, light bulbs went, 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 went off, right, in, in my brain and started finding more users for Evernote. And very quickly I became a fanboy because really, you know, at that point, iPhone 3G happened, um, people are more mobile. Um, there are lots more, lot, lots and lots more of um, smart devices that that's coming out of the market. And the need for being constantly on the go and having all your content synchronized, it's, it's a very, it became a very real need for a lot of people like me, right? So, um, and Evernote helped me greatly solve that problem. And, and that's one of the chief reasons why I thought, you know, I, I joined Evernote. And, and, and at, at the core, we, and I really like the fact that we want to make a positive difference in the world. Yeah. For a moment, I thought, when you say about 3GS, I thought, I want to join Apple. <laughs> like, <honestly. laughs> That's true. Yeah. So, um, I think Evernote is a huge startup. I think the recent funding valued the company at $1 billion. Yeah. Uh, I think the question that I want to ask is, you work with several startups. Yeah. What's the difference between working in a Singapore-based startup, a small right. startup, right. compared to working in Evernote? What's the major differences? Well, for, for one, we're not constantly worried about running our money for now, right? Um, which is great, right? Because being coming from a smaller um, startup, we're, you're constantly worried about revenue, you're constantly worried about um, when's your next user, when's your next funding. Um, I think we're, at Evernote, we're very lucky in the fact, at, at the fact that you know, we're at a position that um, we're pretty well funded. Um, which allows us to be at a position where we could take more creative risks, right? Not just, not just product in, in terms of product design, but also in terms of marketing, in terms of expansions, and, and that's a really exciting phase for, for us to be in. And I would say, to me, it's, it, it's learning very fresh new things at a very different company life cycle, if you will. Okay, yeah. so um, I think one thing that you would realize for Evernote in Southeast Asia is that tell me, I think you are the only person in Southeast Asia serving. So uh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. So, and another interesting fact. So, that the was, aside, yeah. <laughs> so my, my question is that you know, like for one person in Southeast Asia, you're like, yeah. how many countries do you have? Like five or six countries that you're serving? Yeah. Um, to me, to, to, to me, I mean, I, everyone would agree that is a super bootstrap way that Evernote actually <laughs> tried to squeeze Tiangling, you know, to really produce like, like ROI. Uh, I, like I say, I'm a fanboy, so... <laughs> come on. <laughs> okay, so my question is that, is that how, as one person, yeah. how did you manage to, to, to serve different countries and to work out different deals with, I don't know, telcos or any partnership that you're trying to strike across right. Southeast Asia? Right. So, um, so just to clarify, really, when, when I say we, I really say I. I really meant I because <laughs> for the past couple of months, really, it's just still me. We do intend to grow the team um, to at least like four, I think, by the end of the year. Um, but still, for the past couple of months, you're, you're right. Um, it's, it has just been me. And the regions that I'm serving, it's uh, in Southeast Asia, um, Australia, New Zealand as well, because I'm the nearest by default. Um, and really one of the core reasons that I learned is that, you know, it's, it's, not, about, it's, not, it's not about squeezing people. It's, it's not only about running lean for running lean's sake. Um, the greatest lesson I learned is that how do you, given you know, limited time, budget, um, manpower, resources under all conditions, do the most impactful stuff, right? So it's about prioritizing. 
it's about measuring impact and it's about doing things that they are repeatable, scalable. And I think, and again, back to my original point that you know, we're at a very nice sweet spot that we're able to experiment on these scalable practices. We're putting in place processes, um, protocols in the first place, and that allows me to learn a lot more deeper about you know, our Southeast Asia region, really. Yep. So, um, like, throughout your months with uh, Evernote, like, mm. what are some of the key lessons, you know, if ever <laughs> you decide to quit Evernote, if, okay, and, and to build a startup of your own, right. like, what are the few key lessons that you have learned and you would like to share? I think it's about, I think, okay, so one of the biggest lessons that I've learned that, that really impacted me was about consistency, right? Um, consistency in the leadership, um, internally, right? And also consistency in communicating um, what your brand is, what your product is, what your business is to your users and the world at large, right? Um, and our message has been really, really consistent over the years. Um, how, how, how we treat da data really seriously, how we look at privacy as a top priority, right? How we only do one thing to make money, which is to sell your premium accounts. We don't data mine stuff. We don't, we don't um, do advertisements, stuff like that. And it takes years and a lot of effort to build up that sort of trust. And it can only be achieved through consistency, right? Um, so uh, so to, to really like, you know, um, you guys out there, if you're working on your own startup, um, think about the core mission that and and really the problems they are trying to solve and be consistent about it. You could you can ha you could try different products. You can have different services. You can pivot, but at its core, you have to have some principles and values that you have to you know stick by, uh, and that builds trust and trust builds brand, right? And I think I would like to think that we're at a at a very good spot at that. Yeah. Um, so just one step, one back. One step back is uh, in Southeast Asia. So what is yeah. what is your KPI? What did Phil the Bin <laughs> tell you to achieve in Southeast Asia? That's, that's, a, that's a very good question. So um, so I was in I was at Railwood City one day. So we just moved to a new office in Railwood City, um, not a dingy warehouse in Mountain View anymore. <laughs> thankfully, um, I did ask that you know what's what's the objective? What's the KPI? And they were like, you know what, just just be awesome. I was like, really? No, just could be awesome. I was like, okay, that's fun. <laughs> so, and that makes sense, right? On, on a lot of levels because, you know, and again, it goes back to what I do. Uh, I, I go to new markets. I look at, you know, how could we work with natural partners? How could we, you know, engage users locally? And by default, by that very definition, you can't have a defined KPI, right? So think about it this way. If you have a defined KPI, say, okay, I want you to grow um, X number of Evernote users in, in Malaysia by, or Thailand for that matter, by 3X end of the year, right? And you will only be focused doing that. You wouldn't think about, okay, so what kind of new um, partnerships could I, could I create, right? What kind of PR stories could I create? Because those are definitely not measurable in terms of user acquisition. Um, and a lot of stuff wouldn't happen if we have a very defined funnel. But moving forward, I don't deny that we do have to have some um, um, sort of measurement of performance. We always, we always have objectives that we want to fulfill. But as much as we can, we try to, you know, um, delay that. What, what are the objectives, come on? Um, definitely, for one, it's growing number of users, right? Um, that's the, right? <laughs> like the. Um, another one is how do we help users to to realize value of Evernote so that they could pay us money, <laughs> right? To convert them to be premium users. Um, Let's do a quick check. Like, uh, okay. who are Evernote users here? Please raise up your hand. Oh, thank you. Okay, who are premium users? Please raise up your hand. <laughs> thank you. Oh, so awesome. You have three. Like, you have to have so many more people to convert. Wow, my, my kid. <laughs> we have very huge potential here. <laughs> okay. Okay, so um, mm -hmm. I actually want to ask, like, uh, so how about. I actually got a question from uh, one of the, I'm not sure whether he, he or she is here. And yeah. Like, what is the goal for you in Thailand? Like, mm -hmm. what brings you here? Now, interesting. So, some facts, right? Um, today, in South, across Southeast Asia, today, we have about close to 2 million users in total. 
um, globally we have about 5 mil. So, uh, no, not 5 mil, 50 mil, in fact. Oh. I'm sorry, oh, but. <laughs> yeah, no, not 5 mil. What happened to the rest <laughs> of the <laughs> so, sorry. So, we have about 50 million um, users. In, in Southeast Asia, we have about 2 mil. Thailand is one of the fastest growing countries in Southeast Asia. Um, on a monthly basis, especially in the past three months, we're, we're averaging 21,000 new users per, per month. 21,000. Yeah, so um, today we have about 400,000 users in Thailand. So, not very, 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 very good um, growth here. So, naturally, we want to come here and see you know, what could we do here, right? And, and being here for the past few days, I could really feel that um, smartphone adoption here is definitely on the rise at a very, very alarming rate, if you will. Um, and Thailand just had 3G, right, um, last December. So, <laughs> I, I heard something there. <laughs> but, and that's really cool because um, whenever we see that smartphone, like, you no know, new network, are being upgraded in a certain country, new devices are being rolled out, we, it actually mirrors our growth in that particular country, right? So, um, so, so given that market condition, what could we do here? We ask ourselves that. And typically, you know, our natural partners are people like, you know, carriers, so um, device manufacturers. Um, so we're here to see how could we engage local users with these partners to to drive the usage of and adoption of Evernote. Questions? Yeah. Um, yeah. So you need the mic. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So obviously culturally, like, you know, the West and the East is very different. Yeah. What are some of the challenges, you know, you found, like, you know, working in, in, in the East market, like, in terms of customer acquisition? Right. So I think, as, especially, okay, so, so the question was that, you know, what's the difference between working b within a Western market versus a Asian market, right? Um, and to me, really, and, and that's where my role comes in. Um, to me, really, is how do we help bridge the gap um, in terms of what's going on here and what the people think is going on in Silicon Valley, right? Um, now, now, the reason is very simple. We, when, when we set out to say we want to help the world remember everything, um, it's a very basic human condition. But at the same time, people in different regions, cultures, country, they want to remember different stuff differently, right? So how do we bridge that gap? Um, so, and that's where we come in. We work the ground, we engage with local users, we provide feedback and user requests to the product team so that they could internalize what needs to happen on the product front. Um, and as much as we can, we'll try to accommodate, accommodate that. Yeah, so um, that's, the, and, and yeah, that's, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. In fact, most of, and the way we, the reason why we want to do this is actually very simple. Two thirds of our users come out outside of the US, right? Um, and the strongest growing region is definitely in Asia. Um, we're definitely paying attention to this region very closely. Yeah. Okay, uh, so specifically, um, another person asked me is that besides all the telcos that you're working with, yeah. how about startups? Yeah. How can Evernote work with, for example, entrepreneurs in Thailand? Right, we, we love startups and, and really it's, uh, it's one of the most important components in our ecosystem. Um, so, at Evernote, we have open APIs. Um, they are they're FOC, they're free of charge. Um, you could use them. We don't take any revenue of them. Um, in fact, we encourage people to build stuff on top of um, our service. So, um, now, and the reason is very simple, right? Uh, the way, so think about, think about it this way. The way we make money right now, our business model, is by selling premium accounts to users, right? And the only way they would buy a premium account is by using Evernote more, and not necessarily through an Evernote app. In fact, I would. In fact, all our apps is is built on this on top of the same API. So, if we work with more partners in the ecosystem, we encourage more people to use their apps, and some of them might find Evernote useful, and therefore use Evernote more. It benefits everyone, right? So that's why, that's why we, we really want to work with um, local developers to create good local content. Um, so one example is that in, in Japan, um, we have a, 
we have an iPhone developer. He, he developed an iPhone app use, using our API that helps people very quickly access Evernote without going to the Evernote app and just do one single action. For example, if you want to take a photo, fire out the app, take a photo, you're done. Right? You, don't have to, you don't have to create a note, take a photo, attach, blah, blah, blah. You're done. Right? And he's selling the app for, for, for about two, I think it's $299. Um, he's making a living out of it. Right? And for us, it's a very good use case of our APIs. We help him promote it. We market his app. We feature him at our trunk store, at our um, marketing materials. So it, it helps everyone. Yeah. OK, so uh, next I'm going to talk a little bit about culture. Sure. So obviously, you have, you have an experience working in Evernote in Silicon Valley at the same time in Asia. So of course, like in the last three years, uh, where you actually experienced you know, you know, some, some of the working relationship with Evernote, uh, things changed. The company grew bigger, there were more stuff. Yep. And obviously, they expanded to Asia. Yeah. So in your experience, um, the, the culture changed from, is it? Is Evernote still considered a startup? Right. In what way is still considered a startup? And in what way has it changed to become more corporate-like and right. be more process and procedure-oriented? Right. So, um, okay. So, so I will start. I will, I will start this answer by quoting Jason Fry. Um, so he said he said this, and that re really resonated with me really well. Um, he said that what is culture, right? Culture. If you think about it, culture is actually very simple. Culture is consistent behavior, that's it, right? You do something day in, day out, monthly, yearly, the same thing, it becomes a culture, right? And what I saw at Avenue was that even though we were scaling up really r rapidly, um, we still did things really, really consistently, right? Um, every Thursday, we have a all hands on deck. And at every session, Phil talks about talks about, well, it might be some flavor of the week topic, but he's always very consistent in the format. Um, there's always new people on board, he'll introduce them. Um, he'll talk about new features, and then he'll, he'll talk about you know, the topic of the week. So to me, this, this, this is what defines cultures, and we've, done, we've kept that really well so far. Um, and obviously, I, 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 would, I would think that you know, moving forward, uh, as we grow, there will be there will be a lot more people. We definitely need more processes, protocols in place to help you know, stream, um, keep things going. Um, but at the same time, as far as we can, we delay that purposefully because we would like to, we would like to have some you know, chaotic, ordered chaos, if you will, right, within the company. Right? Uh, and that helps with um, dealing with, coming up with different ideas, you know, thinking about what ifs. Right? Um, it still feels like a startup, um, just that, just one, one that's uh, able to take more creative risks, if you will. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so next thing I want to talk is about expansion. Yeah. I think a lot of companies, uh, including ourselves, I think a lot of entrepreneurs will definitely face the same problem. Uh, you build a, you build your company in, in your own local market, and then you try to expand it outside of your own local market in Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia is such a fragmented market, different culture, different languages. So how has Evernote tried to solve this problem? And when you expand, what kind of problems have you uh, encountered? And how do you solve them? Right, um, great question by the way. Um, so very purposefully from day one, we have decided that we're not an American company. We don't want to be just a Silicon Valley company, right? Um, we want to be a global company. So very early on, we already have multiple languages of the app, localized, rolled out, live. And as we, as we move along, we discover different people using Evernote differently in different countries. That's where the cultural differences really come in. And to your point, really, it's Science Asia is a very interesting region. Large, large number of people, um, fast growing market, but at the same time, um, within a very small boundary, cultures change very drastically, right? Different languages, um, different ways of doing businesses, different regulations. How do you solve that? Um, and the quick answer to that is that we're still figuring it out, right? Um, and that's really the main bulk of my work comes in, trying to go to a new market to understand, to work with local partners, to understand local cultures, um, how are things being done. Um, but 
we are very fortunate at the same time also because when I, whatever and I discovered this, whichever new country that I go to, there, however small, there will always be one or two Evernote fans that can't stop talking about Evernote, right? Um, it will be in their own language. It will be in their own use cases. Like for example, I met a chef in Indonesia. She runs a restaurant and um, she uses Evernote to kind of like manage. Um, her restaurant business, operations-wise and all that. And she goes on TV shows, she talks about Evernote, um, she talks about how yes, help her in her restaurant business. And I was like, wow, you, they just taught me something, right? So, so using that, I could, I could use in her own language, how could you use Evernote in different um, restaurants? Because like in Indonesia right now, um, there are lots of cooking shows going on. Right? I think there are lots of aspiring chefs as well. So how can we use this story to talk to this group of people, for example? Right? And the same, same case goes for you know, other places, for example in Malaysia. Right? Um, I have a user, um, she recently launched her own blog shop right? and she started living on herself. So she, she talks about how she uses Evernote to, um, to cook better right? to, and to manage different aspects of her life. Right? Um, so. The, the, the key thing for me, or rather for us, is that how do we find these people? How do we help them to talk about our brand, you know, our service, and, and resonate with the local audience? And that's really one of the key things. Okay. Um, just make a quick check, like, uh, who here are entrepreneurs? You guys are building a product, bootstrapping, strapping, not sleeping, working hard. Okay, <laughs> so who are, so out of all these entrepreneurs, like, who are actually expanding out of Thailand or your own local market? That means you are looking at Southeast Asia as the entire region that you are targeting with other hand place. Quite a few. Okay. So actually, my question is, I mean, just trying to imagine the audience so that I actually ask specific related questions. So, I mean, obviously it's great to have like uh, fans to help you echo and, and yeah. promote Evernote, but at the end of the day is that they, they are people who are who are um, user fanatics, but they don't help you close deals or whatsoever. No. Right? Yeah. So my question is that it's great being alone in South Asia. You have a lot of like leeway to do things. Yep. But at the end of the day, it takes a local people to understand the local market to close local deals. Very true. So mm -hmm. my question is that um, is has Evernote ever considered like hiring someone um, full time in different countries? For example, in Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam, Malaysia. Right. We so no, that's a great question. I think. Um, now, take a few steps back. The reason why you want to do that is really because that you want to understand and listen to your users better, right? And you have to start off with that motivation and intention in mind. Go into a local market. Is the reason that you want to go into a local market is to really understand the user behavior, what's the problem to solve locally, and how do you talk to these people? So, and with that intention in mind, um, going forward, if things go well, Right, we don't rule out the option that we might want to grow a, a local team, country specific team. Um, yeah. Okay, so I understand that um, just not only you shared there are about 400,000 users in Thailand. Uh, last time in the press we said you shared there are 350,000 users in Indonesia. So you said there are 2 million. So where, where's the rest of the 1.3 million account for? Which country? Um, Malaysia. Singapore, um, Vietnam, Philippines. So it's it's a really really fast growing region, and well that's because Singapore is small. But you know, interesting fact is that Singapore has the highest um, per capita per, per capita Evernote user in the world. But that's because Singapore is kind of small. <laughs> yeah. So um, my, my 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 question leading with that is that out of two million users in Southeast Asia, how many of them are premium users? Um, we haven't really done too much revenue analysis on that front, to be honest. But the global average is about five to seven percent um, of our users are, are premium users. So yeah, that's that's what it is. Okay, so going back to the expansion across um, Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. So can you, if possible, share with us like specific plans where Evernote has thought about? and will execute to expand in Southeast Asia. And what are the few things whereby you, you believe that uh, fellow entrepreneurs can also pick up and learn? Okay. Tough question, but please. Yeah, let me, let me put some CPU cycles into that. <laughs> um, 
<coughs> okay, so so here here's the thing. I think um, really Southeast Asia is a very interesting region, right? Um, as we as we have talked about already. Um, small, not not too big a region, big amount of users, um, very culturally diverse. Right, so how do you address audience like that? Right, again, it goes back to the fundamentals. Um, how do you understand the users? You go, you spend some time in the country, you travel there, you talk to real people. You don't look at data, or you don't just look at data. You really have to talk to real people, and don't be afraid of. Well, I, I'm quoting Steve Blank here, but don't be afraid of going out of the building. Right, um, even at 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 what we are right now, we we are still doing that. Um, Take for example, we we just launched Evernote Business. Oh, we just launched Evernote Business. Um, it's live right now in Singapore. We are rolling it out throughout Southeast Asia. And the way we do that is that you know we go to Singapore. Well, I was there, so we have to figure out um, you know what are the not just how the market will react to Evernote Business, but really even down to the nitty gritty stuff like which bank should you use. Right. What kind of payment behavior do the, do they do the users would would, would they pay? Because you would you would never know before you launch, right? And you have to go there to see and ask people and look at how things are done. So the extra effort is worth it, even though it does take time. It most certainly takes uh, money and resources. But without doing that, you wouldn't understand thoroughly what's going on on the ground. Right, and it becomes a conundrum that you know um, it goes back. It goes back. It goes back to the same thing. You became, you will become a Silicon Valley company. Typical Silicon Valley company sit there for two thousand miles away. You don't know what's happening in Asia. Okay. Right. So um, yeah, that's that's what it is. Okay, so can I just uh, help you summarize? Sure. Right. Uh, basically, you said that you will try to go to certain local markets that you're interested in, understand, localize. So my my next question, and probably my last question, is that how how did Evernote localized its service to different local markets in South Asia. So many freaking countries. How do you do that? Oh, so okay. So here's an interesting product announcement, if I may. Um, Evernote Food. We just launched a new version. Um, in in Japan, we have integrated a new food site that's specific to, specific to Jap Jap Japanese users only. Um, Taiwan, I think we integrated with this site called iCook. Yeah. So. Um, so right now in Evernote Food, you could actually look at different recipe sources. If you like certain recipes, you could clip them into Evernote so you could remember them and refer back to them at a later date. And, and this content really are hyper-local. Right? You have to go into a certain country and look at you know, what kind of food size that they, the people visit. You interview people like what I did um, and suggest that you know, we integrate these food sites to appeal to local local communities yeah and f and people are very emotional about food if you yeah so so we have to get that localized and get it right for the local users so yeah, yeah thank you so um if entrepreneurs want to work with Evernote, can they look for you can you make decisions yeah yeah sure so um oh i can't flash so talk to me i'll be here uh, my email is tiang at evernote.com just write to me and um we'll talk Thank you. Okay, yeah. so I don't have any more questions. So if you have questions, um, raise up your hand and I'll pass you the mic.